Rails provides several helper methods to assist us in adding JavaScript assets to our web pages. To keep things simple, we'll just be using some basic JavaScript examples for demonstration. Those of you with more JavaScript experience will easily be able to take these examples further. Let's start by looking at the Rails JavaScript conventions. Just like style sheets, Rails is going to expect our JavaScripts to be located in the public folder inside a folder called JavaScripts. And it's going to expect the file names to end with .js. Again, we don't have to follow these conventions, but we won't be able to just provide a simple name for the JavaScript. We'll have to tell Rails the full path so that it can find it. Let's look inside that public JavaScripts folder. So we're going to find that inside the public folder and then JavaScripts. If we open that up, you'll see that there's already several JavaScript files in there from when we first created the application. Most of those files, prototype, controls, drag, drop, and effects, are all part of the prototype JavaScript library, which ships with Rails by default. You can use these, ignore them, replace them if you prefer another library like jQuery or MooTools. In fact, there's been a slow move towards making Rails more JavaScript agnostic, so I wouldn't be completely surprised if those default files go away in the future. The file that I want us to pay attention to is application.js. This is just a blank file that Rails gives you for convenience for putting all of the JavaScript which ought to be used site-wide throughout your application. Now, you don't have to use it. You can break up your JavaScripts however you want. It's just giving it to you as a starter page for you to put your JavaScript. And it's not being loaded automatically. We do still have to declare the fact that we want to load this file. So let's go ahead and just put in a very simple JavaScript function that we can call. I've called it just JSRoar. It just pops up a simple alert that has the message, I am JavaScript, hear me roar. So we'll save this in the file. And now what we need to do is load this file in so that we have access to it. And we'll do that with the helper method. And we're going to put it in our layout. So inside admin, right below the style sheet link tag in the header element is where we want to load in the JavaScript. Now again, this helper is just doing basic HTML. We could do script source, tell it the JavaScript file location and everything, and that will successfully load in the file. But the Rails helper method makes it even easier. We just type JavaScript underscore include tag, and then the short name of the JavaScript file that we want to include. It knows that it's located in the default location, that it has the default file extension at the end. And the helper method will take care of writing the rest for us. Where this really saves us time is if we have more than one, we can just list them one after another, just like we did with style sheets, and it'll create a separate script tag for each one. It'll save us a lot of typing and help to keep our code uncluttered. So let's save the layout. Now we're successfully loading it in. Let's actually try that. Let's go to terminal and let's do Rails server so we can see. We'll switch to Firefox. And now let's just go ahead and reload this page. Subjects new. And we'll do view source, page source. And here it is, loading up the JavaScripts. Notice that it also includes a timestamp for the last modified time of application.js. And that makes sure that the browser always has the freshest version, that it will flush its cache and load a new version if this file changes. So now that we've got it successfully loading in the JavaScript, let's try actually using it. I don't want to do it inside the CRUD that we've been working on. Instead, I think we should do it inside our demo controller that we were working with before. So we're going to need to tell demo, hey, you need to use that admin layout. So we have the JavaScript. And then I'll add a new method down here called JavaScript. It won't actually do anything in the method, but we will need to have a template. I'll go into demo and create a new one, javascript.html.erb. So now we have a blank template and we're ready to actually call the JavaScript. So I'll do that to start with with a link tag. So link to the text roar. The URL will just be a simple pound sign. And then notice I'm passing in the on click option to link to. So on click is a value we can pass to link to, and it will on click do this JavaScript, which does JS roar. And then returning true or false is a good practice. So let's save it and try it out. I've already got my web server running. So now let's just go to demo slash JavaScript. There's Roar. When I click on it, it executes our JavaScript function. So we've successfully defined the file, loaded it in, and been able to call a function in it. Now maybe you need to call some JavaScript and not have it be on an on-click. We can drop in bits of JavaScript periodically throughout our code just using JavaScript tag. So JavaScript tag JS Roar, this will execute it right away. It's not on an on-click anymore. It just happens right away when we load up the page. In fact, we don't actually have to call a function that's in an external JavaScript file, we can actually just run little bits of JavaScript code ourselves by putting them inside this JavaScript tag. Let's just try it just to see what this does. And let's reload the page. I am JavaScript hear me roar. That's the first one running. And then hello, that's the second one running. If we take a look at view page source, you'll see that it outputs everything that it needs to do each of these JavaScripts, and it even wraps it in C data tags, which is a good practice with your JavaScript. So with just that simple helper method, we're able to have all of that taken care of for us. Now there's a third JavaScript helper method that I want us to look at. 
and it's for escaping JavaScript. If we're using values that have been submitted by the user, maybe directly by the user from a form, from the URL string, or maybe they were even submitted by a user stored in the database and then we've retrieved them from the database. But we can't necessarily trust that there's not something in that user submitted value that might do bad things to our JavaScript if we start using it without taking precautions. Let me show you an example. Let's imagine that instead of just having this alert that I have text equals user submitted text. So there's just a simple bit of text. And instead of having this value hello here, we're going to embed the value text there. We're going to use whatever the user submitted to us and we're going to do an alert with it. Now there's nothing wrong with this. This will work just fine. But what if this wasn't so harmless? What if it wasn't just a text string? What if someone actually put some JavaScript in there? Something like this that would stop whatever JavaScript we were trying to do and do their own JavaScript right afterwards. Let's try it out and you'll see what I mean. Let's go over to Firefox. Let's reload the page. It pops up first with my JavaScript, which has no text output, and then OK. Ah, now it runs their JavaScript. It's just a simple alert message, but it doesn't have to be. This could be something that's much more malicious. So instead, Rails offers a helper method called escape JavaScript, which will make sure that this text gets escaped so that it's safe for use by JavaScript. So just wrap any text that you can't trust in the escape JavaScript and it'll make it harmless. Let's try it again now and you'll see. We'll go back to Firefox. Let's reload the page. And look, it popped up and it gave me their JavaScript as a harmless bit of text. It's an important security concern and something that Rails tries to make as easy for you as possible. Between escaping the JavaScript, JavaScript tag, and then the JavaScript include tag, we have three helpers that help to make using JavaScript in Rails very simple.